All right. Good evening, everyone. First, you've got to pause to observe. Cheers. The creepiness of that. I don't know if anybody's ever been to a paint your own pottery. My husband found this mug at paint your own pottery and painted himself. I find it creepy when I'm making my coffee in the morning. This is staring at me on the shelf. But anyway. The blue eyes. It, it is the blue eyes. <clears throat> so we kind of had an idea of making a video that could become a resource for everybody. So any of you out there that huh? tap maple trees, um, especially small scale, like your backyard, um, not commercial, I mean, not that you don't have anything to contribute, but I'm thinking more of like, you know, we live on an acre and we have five maple trees. What equipment and things do we need? And like, we've had a lot, we've had some friends that have started tapping their maple trees and um, asked us some questions and we're going off a kind of shallow knowledge base. This is our second year tapping maple trees. Of course, as soon as you hit record, the dogs need to go out and need to bark. The children will probably come through naked here pretty soon. Um, <clears throat> So we just wanted to share what we do, and then those of you that are out there that have different methods, that have different knowledge base, that uh, have been doing this longer, that helped your grandfather tap his maple trees, you know, 30 years ago, and things that you learned from him, um, add that to the comments if you have your own channel. Include that so that people can find different ways and different resources and different knowledge. So you're on, why don't you talk about how we do it and I'll go beat the dogs. Okay. Yeah, so um, obviously, you know, we use pretty standard taps. Uh, the taps we use, um, we put some tubing onto, run the tubing down into five gallon buckets and collect like that. Uh, there's also people that hang bags off of them, hang buckets off the taps, and that's a slightly different design, but it all works off the base. Uh, same basic concept, same basic principle there. Um, so, um, yeah, so there's that, um, we go out, we collect, <laughs> typically, you know, on a, on a weekday, with both of us working, uh, we'll go out and collect once, um, you know, we should maybe go out and collect once she gets home from school, um, and if not, then we'll go around at 5 o'clock and collect, and then we'll, typically we can blow off whatever we have on our five trees on a normal day at that point. Usually somewhere between like five and six gallons. Um, if I get it started right away, we're usually finishing at a decent time around 10 o'clock if it's not like a 10 or 15 gallon day. Yeah. Um, so if it's, if there is, if there is more in days when you know, like it's cold, we may only do five or six gallons, just that's what we can get through. Leave the other, you know, five whatever gallons, you know, in a five gallon bucket, just leave it outside. If there's snow, pack it in the snow. Um, you know, for the way we've been taught and understand it, it is perishable. It will go bad. Um, you know this by uh, if it starts to turn yellow or gets a slight odor to it, it's no good anymore. Pitch it, throw it in your garden, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, just recollect from there. I think the thing we, that we read somewhere, you know, worst case scenario, it's mineral rich water that you've pulled, that the trees have pulled out of the ground from who knows how deep, that then you can put on your garden. So worst case scenario, you don't get to it you're putting something that's very, very mineral rich on your garden, so it's not really a waste. Yep, very much. Um. But in terms, so that would be one of the questions. Um, those of you out there that have more experience than us, like how long can you go? Because we try, we're so small scale, and we, we just burn, um, or we boil off on um, a turkey fryer, propane turkey fryer with a buffet pan. So our perfect amount is five or six gallons because that we fill the buffet pan, have a little bit left over, add to it, and we can get it boiled off in a reasonable amount of time. So that's a perfect night, especially on a work night for us. So we like to try to boil pretty regularly. Um, and then if we have a day where it's going to be below freezing, especially it's like going into Friday, if it's going to be freezing, put it somewhere cold, put snow around it, and then boil the next day and we have a little more time. 
but I guess that'd be a question that would be good if you know the answer to this, put down in the comments, like how long can you go? Where do you store it? Ideas for that kind of thing. Um, Thought it was distracting me. <laughs> um, so how long can we keep it? Yep. And then um, like we go, we go off a temperature um, for like when we're getting close. So seven degrees above where water boils. Um, we do have <clears throat> a hydrometer. We just got this one because um, we had one that got broken by a child on a hoverboard. Um, so we were going just off the temperature for a while. So I guess what other ways are out there to determine when the steroid is done? Time of night to play right at our feet, preferably at the stove. You know. yeah, it's the best time and best place. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going to stop as soon as I move the camera. Yep, see? Oh, Mom, I don't know what you were talking about. Mom, you're over there now. Uh huh. Um, we're crooked. Don't see water too. Um, and so we burn, we have like a greenhouse that's attached to the house. It's more set up for full passive solar because it doesn't work that great as a greenhouse. Um, but we, we boiled our sap, or we're, we're boiling out there till we get the buffet pan down to about an inch. Um, and then we bring in and we finish on the stove right here. So again, like what ideas do you have out there, especially if people don't have a lot of equipment? What methods have you seen? What methods have you used? Anything that you know for that? Um, and then for filtering, like when we do our initial filter, a lot of times we take pillowcases um, and we put them down in the bucket, pour the sap in, and then just pull the pillowcase out, and that filters out bugs and debris and that kind of thing before we do the initial boil. And then um, we, just a second. <coughs> have a very long, large, um, large German Shepherd here. So we don't deal with the, the maple sand um, until the very end because um, a lot of times we're getting like a pint, um, a pint, half pint, quart, quart and a half at a time. Um, so what we do is we just um, put it in our jars and then once we're at the end of the season, pour it all back in a big pot, heat it back up, and pour it through the felt uh, like the felt filter to get the, the maple sand out so we only need one and we don't have to wash it and we don't lose as much um, material or do we don't lose as much syrup in that filter. Um, so again, other ideas for your methods for filtering. And then like in the in-between time when we want to use this, we just ladle off the top and don't disturb the bottom um, and that works just fine. So, what else you got? We got notes. Do we cover our notes? Hey, yeah, notes are covered. Notes are covered. Yeah, so I guess the some of the other stuff we talked about is, and I don't know if you texted us on this already. Yeah, I'll edit it out. If I, if I get bored, I'll just edit it out. That sounds good. <laughs> um, you know, on days where you don't have the, you know, freeze, thaw, you know, oh, yeah. scenario, how long will the tree produce for? Um, it seems like we find with ours, for the most part, you know, once it goes above 32 degrees, after about 36 hours, it sap's about done running. Uh, what have you guys seen? What have you found um, on stuff like that? And I'm sure a lot of this is dependent. Uh, you know, with our acre, we're not really in the middle of the woods. So there's trees, there's you know, a, a pseudo hedgerow, um, you know, things like that. So some of them are more sheltered than others. And I'm sure this depends, you know, if you're running a bigger operation, are your trees in the middle of the woods? You know, what side of the hill are they on? You know, things like that. So yeah. um, I'm sure there's a lot of variables here. So, you know, and, and just, you know, just curious in terms of how ours produce, you know, are we getting more or less because they're just kind of freestanding in the middle of open fields for the most part? Yeah, majority. we're in, uh, more suburban area. We live on an acre. We didn't cover. We're, we're in Western Pennsylvania, um, so we started our trees. We tapped our trees 
um, last year at the right at the end of January um, this year we were just a little ways into February um, so I guess your season you know share what your season is um, when do you start when do you finish um, and like your area that you live in, um, where for that particular area, what does your season look like? Um, right now, my husband mentioned several years ago when our kids were pretty little about tapping our maple trees and I thought he was crazy. One, because we had two really small kids and um, I just, I didn't think that five trees could produce um, that much. And we currently have <clears throat> We're about, a, yeah, we're a month into our season, and we have three gallons of syrup, um, about to be a little bit more right now. Um, so share, like, what's the, the area you um, run your operation in? When do you start? When do you finish? Um, just any kind of advice or things to share um, that you would think, like, if you were brand new, things you would like to know. Um, I think that would be awesome. Um, again, if you have your own channel, share that so people have other resources to go to. Because um, I think it would be kind of cool. And there's questions people have asked me that I'm like, well, that's a really good question. Um, this is what I know, but I really don't have a very deep knowledge base to go off of. Um, so I thought it would be really cool if just this, the comments of this particular video became a resource. I just poured off our sap, or I guess it's syrup now. Um, I didn't run the hydrometer through it. We didn't have very much today. Yeah, that's uh, we only had a little over two gallons. And honestly, it uh, was getting a little low in the pan, and we were pretty close anyway. So I just poured it off. I didn't really take a whole lot of measurements on it. But because we're going to do, you know, kind of combine all these later, um, you know, and you know, bring it back to a boil and run it all again. Um, we'll call that close enough. I'm not exactly sure where we're at, whether it actually is technically syrup right now or not. I'm not really that concerned with it right now for us. All right. So thanks for watching. Um, and any of you that end up sharing comments, thanks for leaving your comments. And we'll see you again soon.